Hey, this is Passy from Passy's World of ICT, the guy with the white hat. And today we're looking at an Adobe Animate tutorial. And this is to get you started in Animate uh, using the drawing tools. And we're gonna draw a picture of uh, this item right here. Okay, so uh, we've got a Japan picture it's supposed to be. We've got Mount Fuji in the background, uh, our version of a bullet train and uh, the Tokyo sun obscured by clouds a little bit. All right, so that's what we're gonna make. And this will teach us uh, the basics of the drawing tools in Animate, uh, because before you can make an animation, you've gotta know how to make some nice, bright colored sort of uh, clear objects which are gonna move around. And that's what we're doing. We're just learning how to draw things today. Uh, then we're gonna set you a challenge task and you can try draw a um, city in the background and have a car right in the foreground. So a car driving through the city. These are some which our students made. So I will show you a bit more at the end of the lesson for inspiration, but uh, all the drawing skills you're learning in this lesson, making the bullet train should enable you to make one of these, a car driving through the city. All right, now I'm a bit of a slow talker, so go to the tools cog here on the YouTube player bar and make sure you click on that and set the playback speed to 1.5, 1.75, even two, even double speed, because uh, the video will flow a lot better because I'm too slow. Now this is quite a long lesson, uh, so make sure you take breaks and use this index timeline to then come back to the lesson where you left off. Now we're gonna go through the lesson of all the things we're gonna do, then we'll do a quick live demo in Adobe Animate of the key features. So if you've kind of used Animate already or used Flash back in the old days, you may wanna skip ahead using this timeline index uh, to the live uh, Animate demonstration and just look at that. Or if you wanna kind of skip this video, you can go to the downloads and get the downloaded step-by-step -step PDF instructions and just read through them and follow them. And then come to the video if you get uh, a problem on a section and you can click on this timeline and find the number, click on the number and just look at that section in the video. All right, so so many flexible ways of doing this lesson. So as well as making that bullet train picture, uh, we're gonna learn how to set up an animate project. Now, our animate stuff is all still in red because it used to be red, but then Adobe decided they'd use, oh no, we need to use red for uh, the new Adobe Spark application. So Spark's now red, but we're sticking with red. Um, animate, it's, it is animation, but it doesn't really fit in with Photoshop and Lightroom that are in this blue scheme. Uh, they're for images, but anyway, that's our beef but we're keeping with the red, red animate, uh, or flash if you're from the really old days. Now using the rectangle and oval tools, we're gonna to use those for drawing rectangles, circles, and oval shapes. Uh, we'll look at the stroke, the outside boundary. See this AN here, it's got a red line around the outside that's called the stroke, and the coloring in brown color there is called the fill, so I'm gonna look at that. Also look at having the no color option, so it's like this animate symbol that does not have a border around it, okay? That's when you have no stroke uh, with the no color option. Uh, we're gonna use window color, uh, learn how to use that in Animate CC, or you can just click on the artist palette uh, icon and do gradient uh, color changes as well as solid colors. So then use the gradient transform tool to modify them. Uh, the whole project has to be created in layers on the timeline. And if you've done our Photoshop course, layers are familiar to you. If you're not, uh, it's a way of stacking pictures of objects on top of each other so that something's at the back and something else is at the front. Uh, we're gonna learn the paintbrush and draw some items with the paintbrush. We'll draw our mountain with the snow on it with the paintbrush. We're gonna draw clouds using the paintbrush and then add a blur filter uh, to turn our scribble into some clouds, which is fun. And then at the end, how to save this uh, as an FLA project file you can come back to, but also export it as a PNG or a JPG image, which you can then uh, have on the internet, all right? And email to people and share around. All right, so now we're not doing any, any animation. We're gonna set up this picture and we're gonna make the train uh, actually into what's called a movie clip. So in a later lesson, we can make the train zoom past Mount Fuji in an animation, uh, but we're not gonna be doing that in this lesson. This lesson's just on drawing. So when you first start up Animate uh, 2021 CC, you'll see this screen and we click on Create New and then you can pick uh, 
either game or education, it's the same sort of thing. We just want a medium sized one template here, 800 by 600, but we're gonna change it to 800 by 500 just to make it fit on our screen better. So we're changing that height, just go in that box and put a 500 there instead of a 600. Leave the frame rate at 24 frames per second. And it doesn't matter here whether you have HTML5 Canvas or Action Script 3 uh, for this item. So we're just gonna have HTML5 Canvas for that. And then you click the Create button and that will make your new project. Now, you get this thing called a stage and this is kind of like our drawing piece of paper or that's called the stage. Uh, round the outside, down the bottom, we've got a timeline, okay, where we can put uh, things in when we animate them. We're not gonna be using the timeline much this lesson except to make layer stacks uh, with the timeline. And the tools here, now this is a earlier version of Animate which showed a lot of tools separately. So we had the rectangle and oval tools separate and that was really good and I don't know why Adobe have changed it. But if you go up to this top right hand corner here and click on this icon, uh, get into the one, choose the one that says Essentials. That's the one we're using where the timeline's at the bottom, the tools are down the left hand side, properties are on the right and your work area here is in the middle. Okay, now in the latest version of Animate uh, CC, which we just downloaded recently, are uh, the tools, there's hardly any of them here uh, in the panel because they've grouped them all together under each other in groups, uh, which is a pain in the neck as far as I'm concerned. Very unhappy, double unhappy about that. Maybe it's to support uh, really small screen laptops using Animate, but I don't know, that'd be so hard to do. Uh, making an animation on a small laptop. You really want a big uh, work screen like a graphic designer uses. But anyway, the bottom of the, the end of the story is that we'll show you the oval tool here, this one here, this round tool, but to actually get it to it, if you've got the latest version of anime, you have to click down and hold down on the square symbol here, and then the oval will be one of the options, okay? So you might have to hold down on some things here uh, to get the options, all right? So that's just a bit of a pain in the neck Adobe thing. Let's not get upset anymore about that. Now, uh, you click on the magnification down arrow. It's up here, uh, there's a magnification and this might be too big to see a sheet of paper. So you can click that down arrow and use fit in window or you can choose one of these pre-made percents or you can actually type a percent value in that box. Whatever makes uh, your whole piece of paper fit in the window best of all. Now, we need to make sure we can see all of it. So maybe take it down to 50%, see how big it is, and then change the percents. Fit in window should work. Now there's also a white color panel here because our stage is white at the moment. You can change the color of the background uh, piece of paper you're working on, but we're just leaving ours as white. Okay, so that's what we're doing for this. And now if your workspace gets messed up because we found that uh, somehow, I don't know what we clicked on, but suddenly this timeline jumped up the top and things were all over the place and we couldn't slide them back into position. Uh, just go down to window tab here, right down the bottom on workspaces, you need to say reset essentials, okay? And when we did that, we lost all of our expanded menu here and only have the smaller menu as well, okay? But anyway, window workspace reset essentials if everything goes wrong and things are all over the place and you can't find any room to work. And there's also slider bars here, here, and down the bottom. You can grab those and slide to move your picture up and down and thereby fit it on the screen. I think you can also use this hand tool here next to the magnifying glass and get on the hand tool and push down with your mouse and drag the picture around with your hand. But we find these sliders pretty useful just if you want to move it over here closer to the tools and have more room for the properties or things like that. Okay, so those sliders are handy. Uh, now, there are some icon shortcuts to panels as well. So we're going through a lot of stuff here because uh, we're assuming you're totally new to Adobe Animate. So if you go on the window tab and go color, that brings up this uh, color panel here. And this is where we set up the colors for rectangles or for circles or for lines that we're drawing. Pretty much this is our color setup. And you can also get to it though using a shortcut icon. You should have all these shortcut icons um, down the right hand side here. And the one that looks like this with the artist's 
kind of palette. It's kind of like, I don't know, a curved teardrop with holes in it where the paints are. Um, if you click on that straight away, this color window will open up as well. So you'll see us doing window color a lot, but you can just click on that paint uh, palette icon as a shortcut if you want to. Uh, now we're going to be using layers extensively in this lesson, so better go through what layers are. So we're going to draw our items separately. So first we'll make the foreground green grass. Then above it, we're going to add a gradient blue sky. Now we're going to make these on different layers so that they're fully independent of each other. It's kind of like if we had a blank white sheet of paper and we're going to cut out some green paper uh, for the grass and glue that on or attach that. And then we're going to cut out some blue paper for the sky and put that on there. Um, so all the items are actually separate. And if we want a sunset sky instead, we could peel off that blue sky or over the top of it we could put a sunset sky instead. So we're going to use layers to make everything independent and we'll have all these items on the layers. Now seven, eight, nine, the train, wheels, the body parts and the windows uh, we're actually going to do all that on one layer because when it's on one layer it'll be easy to combine that together and make the train into one animate object and we need to do that so that in a later lesson, not today, but a later one we'll be able to animate that train and make it move. So the layers are in the bottom left hand corner of your screen underneath timeline. So if timeline with the layers isn't showing up you need to go to the window tab at the top and click so that timeline is ticked. All right, when you tick it, you should see it like this. It'll start up just having a default layer one and to add a new layer. So this is all right. We can do the grass in here, but when we need to do the sky, we're going to need to add a new layer by clicking that plus sign. Uh, then you double click in here and you change the name. So our first one's going to be grass. So we'll be double clicking in that and changing it to grass. Uh, the one that's down the very bottom of the stack, that'll be behind everything else in the picture. So that's the thing that's most backward in the picture. And if you've really messed up something and made a layer where you didn't want one, you can just be clicked on the layer to highlight it and hit this trash can and that will delete a layer. Uh, when we finished a layer, we usually put a padlock on it. We click this padlock icon to lock it up so that we don't accidentally uh, edit it while we're doing another layer. It's very easy sometimes to click onto a different layer and suddenly mess up something that's already completed. So when we've completed like our grass, we padlock it. When we do the sky layer and complete that, we padlock it as well. Uh, this is critical here that you need this. It's very hard to see, but you need this round circle here. The round circle represents a blank sheet of paper. And if you don't have a round circle there for some reason, uh, then you won't be able to draw anything on that um, white stage work area. So if there isn't a round circle there, uh, the way to get one, to get a blank keyframe to draw in, is to go uh, to the insert tab up the top, then pick timeline and then pick blank keyframe. But you should not have to do that in this particular lesson. But that's just some knowledge if you need it. And the eye icon, if we've got some things we've already drawn and they're in the way of something else we now want to draw, uh, you can turn those items off, just hide them using the eye icon just to temporarily hide them and then click it again to turn them back on. But I don't think we'll be using that in this lesson, but it is there. All right, so we better get started on our fabulous uh, bullet train picture. And the first thing we're going to do is draw the foreground grass. So double click on that layer one uh, down in that timeline, timeline bottom left hand corner. Just double click and then you should be able to backspace out the layer one writing and type in grass and press enter and that'll set up this grass layer. Make sure you've got a solid block here. Don't click on that outline block. If everything goes funny and you're only seeing pencil outlines of things, that's because outlining's turned on. We don't need that. So make sure um, this is always a solid block here is another thing to be careful about. And then in our tools, we just click onto the rectangle tool so that it's active and we need to go window and properties. So all four of these we need to be showing. So if you're not seeing your tools down the left hand side, you need to go to the window tab and make sure tools is ticked. So it's on. We need uh, edit bar tick, timeline ticked and properties ticked. So make sure you do window tab, make sure all four of those are ticked. All right. So uh, you can click on window then color uh, to get that color panel up or you can click remember on that artist icon. But either way, if you click on this or you go window and 
tick on color so that it becomes open. Uh, you should see this color panel come up like this. And this is where we can set the color for our grass. And the first thing is we don't want an outline. We don't want a stroke around the outside of the grass. So we're setting that to no color, color. Now where no color is, is when you click on this color block here, it'll bring up the whole uh, set of color blocks you can use. And there'll be one here that looks like this. It's a gray square with a diagonal red in it. That means no color. So for our pencil mark around the outside, see this has got this blue outline around it here. Uh, we don't want that. And see this no color, we've put a pink outline around it. We don't want an outline, okay? So click that so it's no color. That's really important. Uh, now we'll get into setting up the color here for the grass. Now we're not just gonna make it sort of dull green all over. We're gonna make a linear gradient. So what you need to do is uh, there's a down arrow here and you click on this down arrow and instead of using solid color, click on linear gradient. Okay, and then we can pick our gradient colors here and here. And what we need to choose is light green at this end and double click on this and choose a dark green at the other. So you have to double click on these and then the color selector will come up. So you double click on this one, choose a light green like this. Then you double click on that one, choose a dark green like this. All right. And then we'll have our linear gradient set up. And we're now ready to uh, actually use that rectangle tool by holding down the mouse button and moving diagonally, sort of downhill direction, uh, to drag out a rectangle. Now, when you start dragging out your rectangle, it's actually the wrong way around. Uh, see how it's turned around sideways? You want that dark grass at the top and the white light grass at the bottom. So we're going to have to rotate it around 90 degrees. Now, how you do that is you get on another tool. So come off the rectangle tool, click on this tool, which is the free transform tool, and then click on the rectangle. You should see these selection dots where you can make it bigger and smaller. And just note, it does expand out of the middle outwise, but you can click on it and use your arrow keys on the keyboard to move it along or move it up and down or hold it with your mouse and move. But we want to get here just off one of the corners. Now, when you get in that location right there, just off one of the corners, you should see this kind of turnaround arrow and you push down your mouse and hold and you flip it around 90 degrees and then you let go of the mouse. So they should you should be able to turn it uh, by getting the turnaround arrow just by hovering near the end with your finger off the button. Then when you see the turnaround arrow, put your finger on the mouse button, hold it down and rotate it around. And then the sort of thing we should have is this, that we've got the light green at the bottom and the dark green at the top because we've rotated it around. And then you just need to stretch it out and resize it with these blocks on the corners and kind of get it down here. It's supposed to be a strip of grass about that big down the bottom on its own little separate grass layer here. And that's got our grass finished. So now we're ready to make the sky. Now the sky is the exact same process of the as the grass, except we're just using blues uh, for the sky and we use green for the grass basically. So you need to click this plus button here and we're gonna make a new layer. So double click in here, call it sky. All right, put a padlock on your grass layer because that one's finished. So make sure you do that. And then we're ready to go drawing the sky. All right, now you just get on the rectangle tool again and go window color to get that color panel, but double click in here and change that to kind of a light blue and this one to change it to a really nice kind of deep royal blue, all right? So they're the colors for the grader we want. This time for the pencil around the outside, remember no color, just leave it on that. And when you drag out your sky and draw it, it'll be wrong way around. Get on your free transform tool, push down with the turnaround key, turn it round so you've got blue, light blue at the bottom and dark blue at the top, and then stretch it out so it covers your piece of paper uh, and move it around and get it like this. So we want grass and then we want sky. All right, so that's got two things done on their own separate layers. So sky's finished, so make sure you click the padlock to padlock that uh, layer. And the next thing we're gonna draw is the sun. Now the sun's gonna use a radial gra gradient, a round one instead of a linear gradient like these guys were. And we're gonna make it yellow in the center and pink around the outside. Kind of give it that Japanese rising sun kind of look. So make a new layer, click the plus, make a new one, call that sun, make sure sky and grass are padlocked. And then click on the oval tool to make it active. Now on some screens, if you've got that new Adobe Animate, you won't have 
the oval tool here and you'll have to push and hold down on this corner here, this little arrowhead you can hardly see. Push down and hold down on that and it'll pop out some options and choose the oval option. Then this guy should change to an oval and we're ready to draw circles and ovals. Uh, and that's what we need for our sun, of course. All right, so we're finally on the oval tool. Uh, go up the top to the window tab, choose color again, because we need to set up the color first. Now use this drop down arrow and change it off linear gradient into radial gradient. Okay, so with this little arrow head here, uh, do that, change it to radial gradient. Then the colors we need are a yellow at this end and a pink at the other end. All right, so they're the colors we're setting up for the gradient. Now you push down and hold the mouse and you move the mouse uh, in the direction of this pink arrow. So you kind of push and hold down and draw it like that, diagonally down, and a circle should appear. Uh, and we should have our sun like that. Now, if you mess it up, just press, hold down the CTRL key down the left hand corner of your keyboard, press the Z key, all right, to go back and then try again. But anyway, you should be able to get your sun happening. Now the yellow's in the middle and we're just gonna shift its center. So we're going to use the gradient transform tool. Now here was the free transform tool, it looks like that. Your tools are probably showing that. You need to push down on that corner and change it into gradient transform tool. Then you click on your sun and you'll get all these symbols. So you can push down on this round circle in the middle and move it a bit that way to make the center of the sun look as though it's shining down. And if you expand these ones out, that'll make a bit more yellow and less pink. So we just have a thin pink around the edge. So we're kind of moving that middle one, pushing down on that circle, moving it down first to make it look like the sun shining down this way. And then we're pulling on those ones and we should end up with something like this, okay? Where the sun's pointing down a bit and then we've got Japanese kind of pinky red uh, around the side like that. And that's our final sun and the sun is done. Uh, so we finished that and now we can move on to the snow covered mountain. All right, I'm going to try to draw this mountain that looks a bit like Mount Fuji in Japan, the famous volcano mountain that's the highest peak in Japan and you see on all these pictures of Japan with nice cherry blossom usually as well, but cherry blossoms a bit too hard to fit into this lesson, so we're not drawing the cherry blossom trees. But uh, we need to get on our tools now onto the paintbrush, make a new layer called mountain, lock up your other layers so they're not gonna affect it, and then get on the brush tool and select that. Uh, there'll be properties panel uh, showing up on the right, and if it's not showing, remember, do that window tab and make sure properties is ticked and you should have these properties showing like this. And we don't actually have to do window color. We should be able to click on this fill here, this fill color, and we need to pick this gray. It's kind of not black, it's not dark gray, it's this middle gray here. That's the color we're gonna use for the mountain. Um, here on this one, you can click this little arrow in the corner and get different shaped brushes. We just want the top one, just a normal one, a round brush, and we want to set it to about size nine, which you can do with the slider, or you can just type it in here, nine. We want smoothing set to 100, and we just leave those two boxes ticked there, all right? So they're the properties we set up on our brush. So usually we pick a tool, uh, we look at its properties, and we make adjustments to the properties, and then we're ready to use the tool. Now, painting the mountain. Uh, if you make mistakes, you can just uh, stop and hold down CTRL key down the bottom left hand corner, press the letter Z to undo. But the idea of this mountain is we just kind of want to uh, paint up like that, put our volcano top on and then have a bit of sort of going down on the other side. Here we just want to keep our hands steady and go straight across in a straight line. Now, if that messes up a little bit, it'll be okay because we can rub it out with the pencil rubber and we're also going to put some train track over that boundary between the mountain and the grass later on. So it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, all right? But once you've got the outline done, then you just use your paintbrush and maybe you can make it into a bigger size as well and just color all of that in, all right? And then once it's all colored in gray, uh, don't worry if you've leaked over the sides a bit here either because we're going to fix that up with the eraser tool in a minute. So if you leak out the edges, don't worry, that's okay. And if you leak onto the grass, a bit, don't worry, because we can fix it all up with the eraser. Um, then change your paintbrush color over to white, 
and paint some white snow. Now, if you make mistakes along the way with the snow, you can use the eraser tool to rub things out. You can sort of change back to the gray color and paint some gray in there. But either way, we just kind of want this funky kind of snow topped mountain there. It doesn't have to look like a photo. The idea of animations is that things are exaggerated. Like we probably got way too much snow on the top, but we're sort of saying, volcano mountain snow we're kind of yelling out snow by making it bigger all right so that's the kind of things we do in animation and then our mountain is pretty much done all right it might take you a couple of goes to make the mountain it did for us now uh the eraser tool we can just tidy up the exterior edges so the eraser tools down here and we need to click in this corner and get a square uh, shaped eraser, not a round one, and set it to about size 18. OK, so we're clicking on the tool and then we're going properties. Now, if the properties aren't there over on your right hand side of your screen, just do window properties. They should show up. We need to change that to a square one, this to size 18. And then we can get near the corners and just do one click. So move the eraser there and go click. Just move it down so it's lined up with that line and go click. So it should just be click, click, click. Don't try and move with the eraser because that's uh, you can easily go crooked. Just if you just pop it into position and go click, move it into position, then go click. Should be able to tidy up those edges, tidy up any grass and tidy up this sort of thing on the right hand side as well. And now we're ready to do our cloud. So padlock all the finished layers. There's a little boy down there. I don't know where he came from. Uh, then make a new layer called clouds. OK, so we're making a brand new layer called clouds and we're setting up for the cloud color. Uh, now, what tool are we using? We're still on the paintbrush tool, actually. So we're still on the paintbrush tool, but we're not going to use that dark gray. Uh, we're going to go up here and use the gray that's just underneath white. OK, so we're using that one for the clouds. So go near white. So click on this fill block and get it on this gray that's just above white here. We need a round brush. We need about size 20 on this. And you just sort of randomly paint your clouds like this. We're going to have three clouds, a cloud here, cloud on the mountain, one that's partly covering the sun. So they look pretty uh, not so good now, but they'll look great when we blur them. All right. So we just kind of get some cloudy kind of scribble drawing painting there. And then what we can do is we need to uh, first turn them, combine the three clouds together. So what you do is you get on your arrow tool up the top and you need to hold down the shift key on your keyboard. Now that's kind of in the left hand corner uh, close to the control key. It kind of usually looks like this has got shift written on it. It might have an up arrow as well. You've got to hold that down and keep it held down with your um, finger and then go click, click, click so that all three clouds are selected. And when they're selected, they get these kind of little dotty dots on them and that tells you that they are selected. And then we go modify, convert to symbol. So modify tab, convert to symbol while those things are all dotty clicked, selected. And then this box should come up may not be exactly here on the screen, but this box should pop up and we just click in here and we're going to call it clouds. It needs to be a movie clip. So make sure if it's not movie clip, use this drop down uh, arrow there to change it to movie clip. Your little black dot should already be in the center of registration. You shouldn't have to change that. And then you click the OK button. And now they've all been combined together. And you should see now when you click on them, there's a bl light blue box that goes around all of them and a plus sign in the middle. All right, that tells you that this grouping together in a movie clip worked OK. Now we have to put them into a movie clip so we can put a blur filter on them and fix them up. If you don't do this, you can't blur them. So we should, uh, when we clicked on those clouds, it should be showing properties and it should be on the object tab here, not on the tool one and it should show all of these things all right if it's not you'll need to go window properties to get this opened up make sure you are clicked on your clouds and they've got that light blue box around all three clouds click on the object tab now you need to go down where filters is click this down arrow no filters added is what it shows at the moment and then click this plus sign the plus sign will make it all happen and make this menu come up and the sort of filter we're putting on is a blur. So you click on blur. When you click on blur, it'll bring up these properties and we're just going to make them 50 and low quality here. All right. So that one's on low with the drop down arrow. And when you type 50 for X, uh, it'll automatically do 50 for 
for why it keeps these both the same. So I just need them at 50s and low quality and then the magic will happen and your clouds will all blur out like this and kind of look a bit misty. And that's our clouds done on our picture now. So they're on their own separate layer down here. So make sure you've got a padlock on them. So we've got our grass, our sky, our sun, our mountains and our clouds. I think we've almost finished the background. We just need to put the train track along here. Then we're kind of ready for part two where we draw the train. All right, so uh, all we need to do is finish our backgrounds, make a simple train track. Now, when we make the new layer for train track, if you do train space track, you'll get this error message. Special characters are not permitted in the layer names and just say, okay, you have to either bunch them together like train track like we've done or you can do train and an underscore character and track and animate will be happy with that but you can't do train and then a space in between so you can have words with spaces in names so we've just bunched them up and called them train track and we're going to draw a long skinny dark rectangle so we're back onto our rectangle tool here again and we're going to uh, choose with the window color or try click on the fill here we want to get that into a really dark gray it's a, the gray which is straight underneath black the darkest gray there is make sure stroke of course is at no color and then we're ready to draw our train track and we just push down our mouse and drag out uh, a big long skinny gray train track right here on the boundary between the grass and the mountain and that's uh our picture done. Now the easiest way to move this around by the way is uh, you can get on the move tool and click on it. It should go all dotty selected like this and then just use your uh, you can push down and drag the arrow move tool. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard all right for fine tuning the moving. So sort of get it roughly in position then use the arrow keys on your keyboard uh, to bump it slightly up or slightly down or just make small changes because it'll be way too hard to grab it and make little changes with the mouse baby changes you need to do that by having it clicked so it's dotty selected and then using the arrow keys on your keyboard so we're up to drawing the train so we've been going for 30 minutes so it might be a good time now to take a break so just take a break and uh, then you can catch up to where we need to be with the whole background drawn and everything. And then in the video timeline index, if you go to the video description, there's that timeline index, you'll be able to find the item that says drawing the train wheels. And when you find that, all you have to do is click the number next to it and it'll take you straight to this section in the video so you can resume your work. So take a break now if you need to, it's been 30 minutes and then uh, come back. Okay, welcome back. So we're going to draw one wheel first and then we're going to copy so that all the wheels are the same size. But let's just get this one wheel done first. So we need to get on the oval tool. Remember, you may have to get on the rectangle tool, push down the rectangle tool and change it into oval. We want radial gradient this time in the drop down. So that's important. Make sure it's on radial gradient. And for the colors, we want this um, medium sort of gray going into black. Okay, and the gray needs to be at this end and the black at the other end. And then we can just uh, hold down our mouse and drag diagonally and get this first little wheel here. All right. And what we're going to do now is we're going to hold down the Alt key and copy this wheel to make lots of little wheels going all the way across. And all the wheels will be the same size. And it'd be really hard to draw each wheel separately and get it the right size. Okay. So that's what we're doing. And you may need to use the magnifying glass tool in the tools here to zoom in a bit first and then uh, get on your oval tool and draw it to get it drawn. All right. So with the move arrow tool, so once we've drawn that first wheel, we get onto this top left hand corner, move arrow tool, and then with your left hand, hold down the Alt key, the ALT key. Now that's down usually near your space bar in the bottom left hand corner. So you put your finger on that and keep your finger on it and don't take it off. And you can push down the mouse button and drag the wheel along. And then when you let go, it should make a copy of it. And you keep repeating all of this alt copying until all the wheels have been made uh, like this. All right, so we want a group of four wheels, a one wheel space, a group of three wheels, a bit of a one wheel space, three wheels, a bit of a space and four wheels. Okay, that's how we're setting up our train. Uh, you could have more or less wheels if you want to, it's up to you. Uh, and that's the wheels done. Now, if 
when you were trying to hold down alt and move a wheel, if you put a wheel on top and then moved it and you've got the other wheel cut out like this, uh, that's because you're kind of not in object drawing mode. So you might have to just uh, click on your wheels and delete them and start again, making that first wheel. So when you get on the oval tool, right, uh, by pushing down on the rectangle tool or whatever and get oval tool, you need to click this guy down here. When you're on the oval tool, this guy will appear and he needs to have this kind of gray box around him to show that he's switched on. And that means object drawing mode is on. And when we draw our wheels of object drawing mode, they should have a green, uh, a blue kind of square around them when you click on them. Okay, to show they're selected. And when you move these, there's no way they can chop into things and cut holes and stuff, okay? So you might have to just delete your wheels if this happens. Go back, make sure you're on object drawing by having the gray box around here. If It's like an on-off switch uh, where you just click this and there'll be no gray box. Click it again, there'll be the gray box. Click it again, there'll be no gray box. But you need it click so it's got object drawing mode turned on. You'll know it's turned on because when you draw the wheel, and click on it with the arrow tool, it's gonna to have a blue uh, selection around it showing it's an object, it's not a graphic like this. Uh, and then that'll get around that problem. Uh, so whenever you're doing rectangles or ovals in this lesson actually, make sure you've got the object drawing mode turned on. I think for lines, you need to turn it on as well. So now we're gonna make the train body. So we're back on the rectangle tool. We're clicking in the colors here and getting pure white is the color for the train body. And we're just drawing this rectangle about this big, uh, just so it's kind of halfway across all of our wheels like that. Okay, so uh, just use Control Z to go back if you need to try again. But remember, you can also go on the, the resizer tool here, the, the edit transform tool, and kind of pull the sides in to make it smaller. But either way, you need to get it uh, like that eventually. Now, making the train front is uh, probably a little bit tricky. That might be hard, the hardest bit to do actually in the whole lesson. So with the oval tool, we get that uh, set to white color as well. And you try and drag out, so you draw an oval that's kind of almost as tall as this rectangle is for the train. So we're just drawing the oval here first with object drawing mode turned on. If you haven't got object drawing mode turned on, when you move it, you might see it cutting into things and cutting bits off, especially on this train. So object drawing mode needs to be on. And then you need to get on your free transform tool and you can kind of uh, get near the corner, remember, and rotate it. So we wanna rotate it down and move it into position like that. So we're trying to have this streamlined, pointy down kind of nose on the train. Uh, uh, like that is the design we've come up with rather than having a straight kind of bullet. It's kind of curving down to make the air sweep over the top and be real aerodynamic. I don't know, I'm not an engineer, but anyway, try and do it like this. And it's a bit of fiddling around to make this the right size and move it into the right position so it matches up with the rectangle and covers the rectangle. But all going well, you should have that for the front of the train, which is a little bit aerodynamic. For the back, we're just using an oval and just not worrying about tilting it. Uh, like that. Okay, and that's how you do get the front and the back onto your train. It's using the oval tool. Uh, so now we're just going to make one of the windows and then we're going to use that alt copy method like we used on the wheels uh, to make the rest of the windows. Okay, and uh, we'll make the first window using a radial gradient rectangle and then we can uh, also make it a rounded rectangle is something new we're gonna do. All right, so get onto the rectangle tool and set up a radial gradient first thing. So radial gradient, and we need white down this end and black up that end. And then on the properties, right down the bottom, if you click on this rectangle options arrow, there'll be one here that you need to click on that's for a rounded rectangle. And if you set it at zero, your rectangle will have very square corners uh, like this green one is here. But if you uh, click on it like this, it'll kind of be a bit rounded off. And we're gonna use rounding off of 20. So you need to click that down arrow, make sure it's clicked on this one, not the broken one, but the solid one, and have it on size 20. And then uh, make sure you've got that object drawing mode that there's a gray box around it, so it's turned on while you're on this rectangle tool. And you should be able to sort of drag out and draw and see how it's made round ends on it for us. That's our first window we've drawn. And what we've done then is we've held down ALT uh, to move it along and made 
just moved it over to here. And Animate should put up these lines too, these guidelines to help you that as you're moving it, when these lines pop up, you know it's going to line up okay, and then you can let go of the mouse. Now this window is long because we've got four wind wheels. This is a three wheel window, so it needs to be smaller. So you can get on your um, free transform tool, okay, the edit transform tool, and grab just this black uh, rectangle here and push it back to make this shorter. So this should all stay the same size, but you should see it getting shorter when you uh, push down and hold on this. All right, so that's a three size. Now you can hold down ALT with the arrow tool selected, just be on the arrow tool. You can hold down ALT and move that over here because that's a four wheel window. You can uh, click on this, hold down ALT and move that there to get your three wheel window. Then we make a little window by just pushing back the size up here for the driver to use. Um, now notice that when you move the window with the arrow key and the free transform, uh, yeah, Animate does make those guidelines to help you uh, do it. All right, so when we finish, we should have, uh, we actually just made ours even longer at the back. We made a giant long window for an observation deck or something at the back here. Uh, then we got our three wheel windows, our big four wheel window. We made a little window here for the driver. So our train's nearly finished. We're just gonna put a blue line up the top and a red line along the side of it, and then we're done. Okay, so we need to get on the line tool now, a tool we haven't used, this one here, the sloping line tool. And we're going to make sure we've got in the properties, so if they're not showing our window properties, but when you click on the line tool over here, the properties should automatically come up on the right hand side. Make sure object drawing is turned on and click on this fill uh, box here, this color box for stroke and get that to a bright red color, this color right here, super bright red and set the stroke and the size we want is three. Okay, so we're gonna pick a really bright red to set that up and then we want size three. And what you can do is you can carefully just hold down your mouse and draw this red line along the bottom of the windows here. Now, if you make a mistake, remember you can do CTRLZ to uh, rub it out. Or I think you could get on the arrow tool and click on it so it's dotty selected and just press your delete key to take it out. Uh, but anyway, that needs to be nice and straight under the windows. And then we're just changing on to uh, blue and we're drawing a blue one as well. So we're just using the line tool, change onto blue color and draw a blue one at the top like that. And that's our bullet train finished. So we're now ready to uh, get our wheels, our rectangle, our back and our front and all of our windows and our two lines here. Uh, click to get them all selected, then we can combine this train all together in one object. Because at the moment you could grab a wheel and just move it out of position, but we want it all in one object. Um, so it's all locked together and it's all safe. It's all lining up, it's all good. We don't want to accidentally bump windows and move them around. So we're going to make it into a single object, but not by locking the layer. Uh, we're going to uh, turn it into a movie clip object. Now, uh, what you can do is to uh, just easily get it all selected. The easiest way is just click on this back window so it's selected, okay? And then just hold down the CTRL key in the left hand corner of the keyboard and press A, which is for all. And you should see all parts of the train or all things which are on the train layer get selected. Now, if extra things get selected, if you find your grass has gone dotty or your mountain's gone dotty, or the train tracks got dots on it as well. That means uh, you have not padlocked those layers. So you'll have to press the ESC key, the escape key up the top left hand corner of your computer, or just click off the train onto the mountain or somewhere else that's so not selected anymore. Go down to those layers on the timeline, make sure grass is padlocked, the train tracks padlocked, the mountains padlocked and the skies padlocked, then you should be able to just click on any part of the train. It could just be one wheel if you wanted to, just click on that, then hold down CTRL and do A and you should only see all of the train get selected and not other bits as well. Very important to only just have the train selected and not other parts. All right, while it's all selected, we go modify and convert to symbol and a bit like we did with these clouds actually, and we made the clouds group together. 
and it's going to come up with that same thing it did for the clouds. We're going to call this one train, make sure it's movie clip. That black dot should already be in the middle and click the OK button. And then our train should be a single a single object movie clip, which later on in a later lesson, we'll be able to animate that. It has to be a movie clip so you can animate. And when you click on it now, it shouldn't have individual parts. It should just have a light green box around it with a plus in the middle indicating that that's all one object. Where that object gets saved to is it actually goes into the library. So if you go window tab and then library, this library panel should open up. And if you clicked on train, you should see the train. It's a bit hard because the white background and the white train uh, are kind of blending in together. And there's where we made our clouds. Remember we took the three clouds and combined them together into a movie clip. So if you click on clouds, uh, you'll see that, oh, that's where our three clouds were made into a movie clip. So these are items in the library and anything that's a movie clip in the library is something you can animate and move around. So if you want to be really fancy in the later lesson, we could try and have the clouds moving across slowly uh, while the train goes faster across. But um, that could be something else well and truly for another day. So our picture's done. So we're now ready to uh, make sure you do save as and save the project as a FLA file. Okay, so you've got it to come back to. So just do file save as it should save it as a default .fla for a project file. Now we want to export it as a PNG image that we can, uh, you know, put on the internet, share with other people, email to someone like our teacher, uh, and so on. So the final step is to export it out as an image. So to do that, we don't have to click on anything. We've just got it all there, and we go file export export image okay is what we do and there's usually a lag here it takes a while to load up some obviously some encoders and converters aren't there at the moment because they leave flash with as little stuff in it running as possible um, so it's got the most power a bit like your car when the air conditioner is switched off or the heater uh, it saves power and gives more power for the engine. And when you turn it on, it might take a little while for the cold air to come through or the hot air to come through. And when you do file export export image, that's what it's like. You'll think, oh, what's happening? Nothing's happening. Has something gone wrong? But there is a bit of lag time. It does take a while, but just be patient. Wait, uh, sort of, you know, about, I think it's about five seconds it takes, which seems like eternity. And then eventually this uh, should come up and click on that down arrow and you can save it as GIF, JPEG or PNG. Now we use PNG 24, that's kind of max quality. Um, if you want a smaller kind of megabyte file size for the thing and you're happy with JPEGs, you can click on JPEG, but we uh, always click on PNG 24 is the one we select. And then after you've done that, underneath here, there's a box where you can tick transparency. Now we don't have any see-through parts in our picture, so we don't need to tick that. So make sure transparency is not ticked. Okay, that needs to be unticked like that. And then we're ready to go. Uh, and notice that we have set it as a PNG, We've done that, but it didn't ask us for a file name uh, for the image, but it does that after we click this save button, okay? So when you click the save button, what happens next is it brings up the usual Windows Navigator. So we get to our file, animate flash, lesson one, drawing and bullet train, put a name in, bullet train lesson V4, that's our PNG. And then you click this save button and that's gonna save uh, the PNG image, all right? And then you'll have your image on your hard drive and you can put that into a PowerPoint document, a Word document, you put it into an email. You could even put it on Facebook and Instagram if you wanted to. All right, so that's a universally usable image. But let's get into it. So we've got Adobe Animate here and you go create new and then we needed to just education or game medium. And remember we're changing this in here to be 500. It wants to do 15, let's make 500. Uh, HTML canvas just create and this should create for us the blank canvas remember you can use these things to move it around these sliders if you need to so you might move it over here and the first thing we're going to do is go down this layer here in the corner uh, layer one and remember we're changing that to grass Okay, for the grass, uh, we're not using the oval tool, we're using the rectangle tool, so we can just be on this rectangle tool. Uh, we need to click on that artist palette, which you probably can't see, because my head's in the way maybe. So we'll go window and color here to get the colors up. Now, 
for the outline color we don't want a color so we're going to pick this no color one for the pencil uh, for this uh, top one we click on that square and we want that to be a linear gradient uh, remember and we don't particularly want black and white because we'll show you when we draw with that uh, that's what we'll get so we'll go control z uh, let's go window and or control and z if you're in america so let's go window and color uh, up this end was the light green and up this end was the darker green uh, let's say whoop, i don't know like that we'll make it more dramatic okay so we set up to go our linear gradient now we're on our grass layer now when we start drawing remember it's kind of wrong way around the light is here and the dark's up there so you get on this tool the free transform tool and click on it and when i move near the side hopefully it shows up in the video there's kind of this turnaround uh, indicator and i just push down my mouse and turn it around like that uh, so it's right way around and then i can resize it now the resizing's from the middle which is a bit of a pain but basically we just get our grass made big enough and then we can push down our mouse and move it and it's going to be very difficult to get right but it's hanging over the edges but look that's okay uh, because i think animate will resize it all later on so that's our grass done and then remember you click this plus sign down here to make a new layer double click and this one's going to be sky and we're just using the rectangle tool again okay but when we do window and color window color we want this to be double click on that color block we want that to be a nice light blue this one here to be kind of a deep royal blue like that and of course we're going to draw it out and it's not right way around so we get on that free transform tool click on it get near the corner so the uh, turnaround appears turn it around and then we just need to stretch it out stretch it out like that move it around and yeah the fiddly bits getting it the right size uh, now i want to do this quickly because the video is already going to be like over an hour long uh, let's just say that's our sky there all right so that was the sky uh, next we're drawing the sun so click the plus make a new layer double click in there and sun all right for sun you need to push down the rectangle tool and get on the oval tool do your window color and this time we want it a linear a radial gradient a round one and we want one end to be yellow and the other end to be a kind of a pinky color okay and then we just push down our mouse and draw diagonally and it'll pop into a circle like that that looks good now remember on our free transform tool here you can push and hold down on it and get on the gradient transform then you click on your sun we wanted to move that a little bit so it was shining down and maybe spread this out here so that these are a bit wider perhaps um let's see so it looked like it's shining down sort of that'll do all right then you just click on the sky and that's our sun done and then we're up to drawing the mountain so plus and a new layer mountain now mountain here has gone uh, underneath sun so we can push down and hold that and move it up like that now we can't see all of our layers here so we can sort of get double arrows and move that up then we can use our magnification here just to go to 75%, let's say. Uh, now for the mountain, we need to get onto the paintbrush tool, this one, and then we need to see its properties. So go window and make sure properties is ticked. Now uh, we don't want a gradient fill. We just wanted this uh, dark gray for the mountain. I think it was that gray. And what else did we want on this we wanted a size oh yeah let's go with size nine for the paintbrush and remember we wanted a round-headed paintbrush and the idea was to just sort of draw this volcano mountain and then coming down the other side like that round there then try and go pretty much straight across which i've messed up greatly uh, so I'll just try and do that now we're going to put train track over there later so that's going to be okay uh, let's just let go so I'm just pushing and letting go doing stuff all right make a real mess but the idea is 
just color it in. If you make mistakes, you can get on the eraser tool and rub them out like that. Uh, and we need to get that all colored in, but we're not going to do all that right now. Uh, then you can get Oh, and I wonder if we could paint bucket fill it. Let's just give that a go. I haven't tried this, but we'll see what happens. Window and properties. And we've got that. Okay, we can paint bucket fill in these areas. Because we've drawn all around the outside, uh, we can just kind of paint bucket fill those by the looks of it. All right, so that's our mountain. Let's get on the eraser to fix up that little ski bump there. Now that's made a hole in our sky. So the thing is that uh, we haven't padlocked these other layers. Remember down this bottom left hand corner, you're supposed to click padlock so they're all padlocked. And then it'll only rub out the mountain and won't make a big hole in the sky. So very important to turn those padlocks on. Uh, then we're just getting on our paintbrush again, window properties. This time we wanted white and we were kind of making a bit of uh, kind of like snow on top. And see, if you get your snow on there, then you can get on your paint bucket tool and window properties and just have it white and we should be able to paint bucket in the snow like that. All right, so that's got our mountain done. Then we just needed to do the train track. So plus to add a new layer, we're just calling it train track. And remember, when we put those spaces in like that, we'll get this error message. That's not permitted. And it's fixed it up automatically, putting an underscore in there. So that's okay. Um, we're now ready to go with the train track. Here we need to push down on the oval and get on the rectangle tool. Uh, we need to go to our window and color and set up for that to be really very dark gray. I think it's a dark gray underneath the black, actually, that we're using. And we're just going to draw a long skinny square like that for the train to go on. Uh, remember too, when we're on our mountain, we'll just unpadlock, we'll unpadlock that. Uh, you could use the eraser tool and let's do window properties. Very mindful of the time here, but I guess things take time. So if we're on our eraser tool, we need to see the properties. Windows and properties. I don't know why properties aren't staying up all the time. Uh, we should be able to get, it says label sound frame. Uh, we need to go on to tool. I don't know why it went to frame. We need to get onto tool here. And on tool, tab up the top, we wanted a square eraser. We wanted to make it pretty big, like about 20. So yeah, if you're not seeing the tool properties, if you're on this or this, you won't see them. You need to be on the tool tab up the top of properties. Anyway, with that one, remember just move in position, single click, single click, single click, uh, single click, single click, single click. Uh, we won't bother doing it properly right now. But anyway, that was the idea of that. Uh, now we've done our train track, we can padlock that, padlock the mountain. Then we're getting on our oval tool and we might use this magnifying glass to zoom in a bit here. And on the oval tool, we want our window color and we want to have a radial gradient. And I think this end, double click on that was black and the other end's white or it's a gray color. Now it's giving us a pencil. Why is it giving us a pencil and saying we can't draw? The current low train track. Ah, we've locked our train track layer. That wasn't too smart. We better unlock it. <laughs> okay, so we need to make a new layer. We're up to drawing the train. So happens when you rush things. All right, so I've got this layer called train I'm on the oval tool. Hopefully I should be right to draw a wheel now. Okay, now that wheel is wrong way around, of course. Uh, let's go back to window color. So I just did control Z to uh, take that color out. So this part's supposed to be black and the first bit's supposed to be the kind of dark gray color. I'm going to draw your wheel. It should look better like that. Now, remember when you've got one wheel drawn and we haven't drawn it with object drawing either. So let's control Z again. 
Remember on the oval tool, you want to go down the bottom of the tools here, make sure there's gray around object drawing and that was turned on. Uh, so finally, we've got a wheel. Then we can go on our uh, arrow tool up the top, click on the wheel and it's got the blue line around it so we know it's object drawn and that's good. Hold down the ALT key, the ALT it has written on it, ALT next to your space bar. And then we could just kind of duplicate wheels. Uh, I'm just gonna do this quick. They should be uh, not touching each other, but anyway, it's giving us those bars to line them up. And then we went onto the rectangle tool and we just went window properties and for its color, we were just making it white. And then the go was to draw a rectangle on top of the train like that. And then we were going on the oval tool and we we're kind of drawing an oval with object drawing turned on. Then we were pushing down on our gradient transform and changing back to free transform up the top left hand corner here. And this one, you could get near the turnaround near the corner, turn it down a bit, uh, make it bigger. Kind of ends up looking like a lizard head or something. A lot of fiddling around. Use your arrow key just to make little movements. All right, that'll have to do for our train uh, thing. Then we were getting on the rectangle tool and we were making those windows. Remember, we had window color and we were setting up for a radial gradient. And I think we we're using, this will either be wrong way around or not, but Let's just see what happens. We'll go for that gray color up that end. Why is it doing that? Oh, we've got an extra one there. So I'll pull that one away to get rid of it. Having so many problems here. Okay, now when we draw a window, remember we wanted to make them round as well. So go on window properties and down the bottom where it says rectangle options, you might have to grab the bottom of this and get the double arrows. You move your mouse or your finger off it till there's double arrows and then drag that down so we can see them. Uh, and so you need to click that arrow, click on this guy. And remember we were using size 20 for the roundness on the rectangle. And so now our window should be nice and round and it is, there we go. And we could uh, click on that, hold down Alt and make our other one here. Okay, then we needed to make a real little guy here. So we get on the free transform tool, push that right in and there's our little window for the driver. Then we were getting on the line tool and doing window and properties and picking a bright red color and a size I think of three from memory. And we were drawing this red line kind of along the bottom of the train. And then we were just going window properties, oh, window tools. I've just lost my tools, window tools, window properties. And we're making that a nice royal blue and drawing a blue line up the top. Okay, it wasn't supposed to be there. Get on your black arrow tool, select it and use your arrow key, your down arrow key to move it down. All right, so that's the basics of our train. Now our train we wanted to combine all together. So remember if you just click one window and then you go control A, uh, you can see here it has selected the train track as well. So something's wrong. So I'll click off on the sky. When I look at my train track, it's not padlocked. Okay, so I need to be on the train layer down here. Uh, then if I click off and then go click on that window, go control A. Now I've got my whole train selected. And if I go modify convert to symbol, this one's going to be called train. and it's a movie clip and that train is now all one item, okay? That can be moved around and we can make it animate later on. So it goes across like that past Mount Fuji, but we're not doing that today. Uh, we're just putting it on the track and there's our train done now. We haven't done the clouds, forgot all about them, fit in window, uh, the clouds. 
Okay, ah, uh, well, we're here, we might as well do them. All right, so we're on the paintbrush tool, we were getting our properties. Don't know why properties aren't showing all the time. Uh, we needed a color for our paintbrush, which was just this light gray, and we don't want a square paintbrush, so I want to hold that down and get it round. Uh, was it size 20? Yeah, I think it was around size 20 for the cloud. So anyway, we'll just kind of draw a cloud like that another cloud like that and a bit of a cloud across there uh, then you needed to get on your arrow tool and hold down the ctrl key i think to click on e the shift key now it's hard to see but all three of them are selected if we zoom in maybe you can see those really light blue lines around them and then we're going to modify convert to symbol because we had to have them as a movie clip uh, because otherwise we cannot put the filter on so we go movie clip and then we could go window uh, properties and filters uh, we could click this plus sign next to filters and remember we're using a blur filter and then for this we wanted 50 which should make the other one 50 and low quality and that kind of sets up our, our clouds for us Okay, and that's the drawing done. All right, so that was the live demonstration. Hope that helped a bit with doing things. And so let's get this lesson wrapped up because it's been way too long already. So that's it. That's the basics of how to use the drawing tools in Animate. And the final thing's a challenge task for you guys. So the same sort of steps we did in the train picture, you're going to make this background uh, image of a city and maybe some trees with the paintbrush. Then you're going to draw a car all on one layer for the car and then join it all up together into a movie clip, all right? So these are some which our students have made previously. So you can see they've made their gradient sky, which didn't turn out too well here in the rendering, uh, made their buildings, paintbrush some trees, a road, and then they've drawn the car separately with a little guy in it. Um, so all sorts of things you can do. You can make rainbow cars if you want to using gradients. This one, she spent a lot of time making these sort of letterings for Freakville. That's quite intense. Uh, here we've got the Batmobile. It's even got a little bat sign drawn on the side, if you can see that. Uh, here's a truck. So you don't have to do a car. You can do a truck if you want to. Uh, and... Uh, here we've got a car and a rainbow car. We've got no driver. That must be a Tesla driverless car. Uh, and we've got a red car there with interesting ones. So see how that, if you use that linear gradient with white and black and put the stroke, the outline to have black around there instead of no color, you can make really nice windows. And once you've made one window, you can hold down ALT and just drag copy to make the others and then drag this one over here and use your transform tool to make it smaller. So you can put your whole city together pretty quickly. Uh, all you have to do is make one window and then you're just resizing it and holding down ALT and copying it. Uh, there's another one of a red car. Here's the hippie van, the hippie bus uh, with the rainbow on it. The hippies had the rainbow before that other minority group did, I'll just let you know. And they've stolen the rainbow off the hippies with their peace sign. It's a bit hard to see the, uh, the peace sign on there. And here's a big dark limousine going through the city. So that should give you plenty of ideas of the sort of thing you do. Now for animations, it doesn't have to be realistic like a photo, like big, bright and bold colors and oversized things and undersized things, all exaggerated, it all adds to the animation. So that's the idea. We want to go for big, bright, bold colors in this uh, to make them grab people's attention. Now on some of those things like the hippie bus where we had it colored in with a rainbow and there were some things with triangles in there. Uh, we've learned how to draw rectangles and ovals and circles. But if you want to draw a different shape like a triangle, you need to get onto your line tool and you make one line and then two line and then three lines like that. And zoom in and magnify and try and make sure these ends meet each other, that there's no gaps. Now, just to help in case there is gaps, because there are always these little microscopic gaps, when you're on the paint bucket tool for coloring it in, click on this icon here, and make sure it's on close large gaps, and then animate or close up the gaps and paint it. Sometimes if you don't do that, you'll be clicking here and animate refuses to paint it because there's a little gap and the paint would leak out and go all over your whole page. So animate refuses to do it. Now, how we got this rainbow color here was you can click here and get an extra color block 
Okay, you can make up to 15 color blocks and that's how you make rainbows. So we just clicked in here and made an extra one that was red. So we've got yellow going to red going to black. And if we didn't want that, we'd just push down our mouse and hold it and just drag it away here and let go. And it'll just disappear and we'll be back to yellow and black. Okay, so that's how you make these gradient things. And when you get on your paint bucket tool and you just click inside that triangle, it should paint bucket fill in going from yellow to red and then across to black. So that's how you make those gradient shapes. And some shapes like the cars, you'll have to draw the outline of the car yourself using lines and then use paint bucket fill to fill up the car. So have fun with Adobe Animate. Uh, this is how we're learning to draw. We're gonna spend a bit of time learning to draw because unless you get good drawings and uh, things, you're not really gonna have good animations. Although some people would argue and say scribble stick figures, animations are great with a good story and they probably are. But anyway, you've learned a lot from this video. So give it a big thumbs up like to help us out. And we're gonna be putting out some more Animate videos. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And we'll see you in the next lesson.